Now let me talk for a moment about something you will appreciate better than most, and that is the nation's debt. The national debt has risen from $11 trillion to almost $20 trillion under President Obama, which will make it even more difficult to pay for the promises in Medicare and Medicaid, among other things. In the mid-2020s, we'll be paying more than $800 billion a year in interest on the national debt. $800 billion in interest. Now, some of you might want to buy some of those notes, but um, $800 billion is a lot of money, needless to say. That's about four times what we pay now because of the eight to nine trillion that President Obama has added to the debt. By 2025, federal tax revenue will only be able to finance interest payments, current payments in Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, and nothing else. All federal revenues will be taken up by those programs. Every other federal government activity from national defense to homeland security, to transportation and energy assistance for the poor will have to be paid for with borrowed money. Not to mention that 10,000 baby boomers a day will retire for the next 19 years, all retiring into Medicare and Social Security. And the government has made tens of trillions of promised benefits that the government has made no plans to cover. None whatsoever. Now, that is likely to fall on all of you in the form of higher taxes or re reduce benefits once you retire. Though, as I look around, most of you aren't near retirement. Um, but it's something you need to think about because you have to plan for the future. Um, the reduced benefits once you retire could be substantial, which I'll talk about in a moment. Because every dollar of debt is a dollar of future tax increases. And that means that even if you're not worried about retirement, you need to worry about the tax increases you're going to have to pay to fund the debt. Because somebody's going to have to fund it. Now, the number of seniors from 2010 to 2030 will increase from 35 million to 72 million, essentially doubling. And by 2050, there will be more than 86 million seniors. 86 million people collecting benefits in Medicare or Medicaid and Social Security. Unfortunately, there's also some $60 trillion in unfunded promises in Medicare and Social Security over the next 75 years, covering the span of your children and grandchildren's lives. Without changes, an enormous generational conflict is coming. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office found last year that if we make no changes in entitlements whatsoever, none, that taxes would have to go up 48 percent across the board in 2030 and up 86 percent in 2050. It means all of you would be paying those tax increases. There's an old saying that if you borrow from Peter to pay Paul, you can always count on the support of Paul. But this will turn that around a little bit, because what if Paul is a grandfather and Peter is the grandson and his taxes are going through the roof to support his elders rather than his own children? The good news is that small changes can be made now that will make a huge difference going out. Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan sat down in the 80s and made some changes in Social Security, and as you go out, the benefits become much, much greater, even though it was a fairly small change at the time. But these days, no politician will talk about Medicare or Social Security for fear of being accused of pushing grandma off the cliff to cite an ad that was used in a previous campaign, uh, which actually showed an elderly lady in a wheelchair being shoved off a cliff. Um, so uh, those kinds of ads uh, are on the shelf and ready to go should someone mention it. Um, but as I say, small changes can be made, the kind that Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan made in, in the mid-80s. With minimal pain, the longer we wait, the more painful the choices become and the more difficult they are politically to sell. I mean, if you tell people we're going to have to cut huge amounts and you have 82 million seniors, guess what? You're going to have a revolt from seniors. And who votes? 
seniors do. Young people, not so much. Seniors who have nothing to worry about except their benefits and maybe playing golf and whatever, seniors will vote, especially if you're about to take something away from them. Uh, and that is going to change the dynamic in elections if we wait around. Now, Social Security is a little bit different because it's a closed system. Social Security can only pay out what it takes in. In early 2030s, it will run short of money. And at that point, according to the actuaries, it will automatically start paying out less. So at that point, benefits will be cut as much as 25% overnight. Everybody's benefits, across the board, 25% cut. Now, you know, if you're a low-income senior and you suddenly have a 25% cut in your benefits overnight, that's the difference between buying groceries and going to the doctor. I mean, that is a huge cut for somebody who is low income. So if nothing is done uh, to shore up these programs, that's the kind of situation you're looking at. Um, as Bill Clinton once said, this isn't about ideology. It's about arithmetic. All of you are familiar with arithmetic. You know, certain things can only work out a certain way. Regardless of how you'd like them to work out. Regardless of what you think the equities are involved. Mm -hmm. Arithmetic is a hard taskmaster. It either adds up or it doesn't. <clears throat> And right now, we have promised so much more than we can pay for, it's going to be a huge problem that is likely to pit the elderly of the country against all the younger people who are going to be facing enormous tax increases to keep their benefits flowing.